Hello, welcome to another edition of Ride Rescue and another uh, rescue project. It's kind of crazy, this is only a year old travel trailer, fifth wheel, and I bought it from a dealership. I won't name names just because we had so many problems. <laughs> uh, found this travel trailer, I was really excited about it. And the dealer, part of the negotiation, they come in really cheap and then they add on just a ton of warranty and cost for this and a cost for that. And it's just, it had to have been close to $10,000 of all these add-ons. I'm not gonna pay for that. I'm not, the only thing that I could get all the way down to bare bones was as is, I mean, I, they wouldn't even let me put a battery in it and try anything. They were so upset because they wanted to sell their expensive warranty. <laughs> so I took a risk. What could go wrong? It was only a year old. In fact, it wasn't even a year old yet. I think it's still under manufacturer's warranty. It's got two months left. So I figured I can't go wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, I should know better. But since I am a fix-it guy, I saved at, at least... $3,000 on just the bare bones warranty. So I figured, hey, $3,000 I can spend on fixing the trailer up if there's anything wrong with it. Well, there's a bunch of things wrong with it. Start with the slide, brought it out, put it back in, and it was crooked. <laughs> I was like, ah, well, the manufacturer would cover that under the original 12 month warranty, luckily. But I also found out that if you just cycle it all the way in and out, and my old tra travel trailer on the slides, if I went to the end and kept going, it'd go clunk, 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 and it was, it's not good for it. This is just the opposite. You go all the way to the end and you hold it for a few seconds, and it resets the sensors as to where it knows where it is. So after bringing it in and out a couple of times, reset the sensors, slide works perfect. Awesome. Plugged in the shore power to turn on all the lights and check everything. Everything worked great. Awesome. It's got a solar system. That's really cool. It's got a 165 watt solar panel on the roof. It's got a 55 amp MPPT controller. That's awesome. No battery. Battery. It wasn't even a year old yet. It was an ATM battery. They're kind of an expensive sealed battery. So for whatever reason, the dealer, I think, pulled that out and wanted to keep it. It actually had two. It had an auxiliary box as well as the original box. So those two batteries are about 600 bucks. But I knew it going into it. So I figured I'll buy batteries. Well, I started out just putting a regular lead acid flood battery in it just so I could test everything. And I'll show you kind of where things got started when things went wrong. <laughs> so I had the trailer plugged into shore power. Everything was working. And then I wanted to put in a battery and test everything else. I wasn't thinking, <laughs> but as you can see, I've got bare wires for the batteries. They're, they're just lying here on the bottom tray. I should have clued in, I know better. Those should have been wrapped before I started messing around in here. While well, I set the battery in, hook things up, everything stopped working. So I thought, oh man, could those have shorted it out? So I go inside and my wife says, what's that smell? So what, what do you mean, what's the smell? She says, yeah, I smell a burnt smell. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, pulled the shore power off, put the battery on, checked everything. Everything works. Oh, well good. It wasn't that bad. It must have been just a breaker. Must have kicked a breaker, left a little bit of a smell residue. Check all the breakers, they're all perfect. It's got a bank of fuses for the 12 volt. Check all the fuses, they're perfect. Disconnect the battery, plug in the shore power, nothing works. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say nothing, the microwave worked. So then I realized, okay, well maybe it's the 110 power works. So I checked all the 110, everything works. Everything that's 12 volt quit working, which means the built-in converter that converts 
110 to 12 volt that powers all the lights and all those accessories, the slide out, the refrigerator, all that is 12 volt. None of it worked. Hook up the battery, it works. So I've got to find that converter charger and hopefully <laughs> it's a fuse because <laughs> that's not going to be covered under any warranty. And fortunately, it's not a really expensive part. It's just a lot of labor. So let's see if we can find that thing and pull it out and see if there's any fuses on it or little circuit breakers or if it's just fried. Before. In my last travel trailer, I put in a battery monitor system and I also put in a mobile self-standing solar panel. So in my last trailer, then I wanted to make some changes to the controller charger that goes from the 110 to the 12 volt. I took off the cover and it was just right in the bottom. Well, you can see um, the way this breaker panel is, it's not going to be my, like my last one, but I'll start by just removing these. There's no power hooked up. I don't have the battery hooked up. I don't have short power hooked up. And also, <laughs> This kind of stuff drives me crazy. This is a really, really nice fifth wheel. Very good quality. How, how did the installer get these so screwed up? Those should be perfectly aligned. <laughs> Crooked and off center. Well, the light switch and the air conditioner and heating and air and there's a vent. Those are up there. I'll show you later. They're all crooked too. <laughs> this stuff drives me crazy. So I'm hoping once I remove all this, I can line it up and not have to drill new holes and not leave it all ugly. If it does, I'll just put a black, large black panel on here to cover up the holes and I'll still straighten it out. So I, yeah, drives me nuts. Amazing everything that's hooked up to this 12 volt panel. <laughs> Got a, a row of 15 amp fuses. Pretty good size. Pretty good gauge wire that's coming into it when it comes to the neutral side. And then all of the positive sides are fairly small. And then this one large 12 volt looks like a 30 amp breaker that will reset itself. That's got a pretty good size gauge wire too. I don't see where they're going, but they're dropping down in there. So most likely that 12 volt converter charger is down there. Even though I know there's no power in here, I still just like to keep in mind that it just might have some residual power somewhere that's gonna bite me. So well, normally I'll put on some rubber gloves, but I'm just going to be really careful. All right, well, I got my work cut out for me. Uh, I can't tell exactly where it is. I don't see it anywhere in there. Uh, there is a... There is a 110 plug that's plugged into the back of this. It's just a regular outlet. I'm suspecting that is going to that converter, converter, charger. <laughs> so I will see if I can trace that wire and see where it goes. And we'll go from there. So that is what I'm looking for. What I had to do is take this side panel off that covered all of this up. And it's actually only five screws. But yeah, quite a... <laughs> menagerie of piping and cables and power but I'm noticing you zoom in on there's a puddle right there and there's a drip that's hanging off the side of that blue pipe right there that is antifreeze so for that to be dripping off that blue hose, it might be a connection up there on the floor, or who knows. So that's another thing I need to look at. 
I noticed there was a, a residue on the floor here. Uh, I assume that somebody had spilled, but no, there's something leaking. But anyway, <laughs> back to the original project. I gotta climb in here in this little cubby space and remove that. So let me get it out and then we'll see if we can do some diagnostics on it to see what's wrong with it. So fortunately for me, there is fuses on here and it's popped. And it's popped. <laughs> and it's popped. So, obviously, this did get shorted out and luckily for me, it has three 25 amp fuses in it. So, now I need to get me three fuses and test it. I put three new 25 amp fuses. Everything's off. There's no shore power. So then I plug the trailer into shore power and everything comes back on again. Check the two leads coming off from the converter that goes to the battery. Those will charge now. Vice versa. Unplug the shore power, put the batteries on, everything works the way it's supposed to. So fortunately it didn't damage that controller. But <laughs> that control box, the converter charger, um, now that I know what it is and I have the model number, I'm able to get online and find out that it doesn't support lithium batteries. So now I'm in a dilemma of what am I going to do? <laughs> do I change the converter charger to handle lithium or do I just disconnect the charging part of it and just use the converter that will power everything when we have shore power? And the battery that I'm going to put in, the lithium battery, is a 200 amp hour battery. One big battery. If I was doing two lithium batteries, two 100 amp batteries, those 100 amp hour batteries you can charge with a controller um, that is lithium capable. So that's one of the things I was thinking of was, well, if I buy a lithium converter that charges lithium, I don't know if that will handle the 200 amp hour battery anyways. So it, it just makes the most sense to, now that I have it working, keep what I have, and I've got to figure out a different way of charging that battery so that if I'm on a generator, then I can charge the battery through a battery charger that's specifically made for that big 200 amp hour battery. So yeah, there's a lot to think about, and I'll get into that in a, an upcoming video. But as you can see, I lined it up. <laughs> what I did is this was pushed over to the side and it had some plastic pieces on this side that was holding it over. So I used a grinder. I ground off that plastic. I was able to move this one over and then did the same thing on here. There was some interference on this side. I was able to grind that up and move this one over. And now I've got them perfectly aligned. Looks so much better. I did the same thing up here. <laughs> These were crooked. This one was down lower and twisted. This one was up higher. This one was twisted. <laughs> kind of stuff drives me and my wife crazy. It's a nice trailer. <laughs> no reason why it can't be nice here too. So all I did was I just took these off. They're just on with two screws. All three of them are plastic. Just ground it out into a slot so it was oval out able to straighten them up. This one I was able to just bring it up. This one bring it down, twist them. Now these are perfect too. <sighs> but now I'm finding other issues. Now that I've removed the panel where all this stuff is, there's some plumbing down there. There's some electrical down there. I've got a couple of pipes that are leaking. Uh, the previous owner didn't know what they were doing when it came to running the pump. They ran the pump um, off of a valve that was switched so there was no water. It couldn't pull water out of the tank, so it collapsed those pipes. 
Well, I mean, they're flat. They're, it, they won't suck anything through those pipes. So I'm hoping, now that I've got the vacuum suction relief off of those, maybe I can get in there with a blow dryer or, or a heat gun and heat those up and I can massage them and maybe open them back up. That'll also be in another video. So, so anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Appreciate you tuning in. Keep an eye out for my upcoming videos. I've got several on this trailer and so yeah. Thanks for watching. Give me a like if you like what I'm doing. <laughs> Goodbye for now.